Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about a little bit of a tricky topic relating to self-awareness, which is how to be aware of when you're in a state of mind where you're distorting the truth in such a way as to fit with established things that you already believe. An extreme example of this is denial, when there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that is being presented to you or presenting itself to you that would push you to believe one thing, but you're sort of holding on to the opposite of it, or you're holding on to something that contradicts it, because you're having a tough time entertaining this other possibility. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to do this sort of thing. Like, I want to see the world as truthfully as possible, and I want to be open to realizing things that are sort of hard to stomach, because I feel like it's good for me to get over them and just see the world the way it is. So I want to be able to catch, catch these sorts of things. I want to just focus on one technique or tool that is really helpful, which is how to spot exaggeration, like how to tell when you are exaggerating, which is incidentally also helpful for spotting if other people are exaggerating. One way that I like to do this is when I'm speaking or when I'm writing, I want to look at modifying words that I use. So for example, if I say, oh, there are a lot of people who have told me this one thing. Notice I said a lot of people. I might say many people, or something like that. One useful technique is to look at those modifying words, and then to write out a list of modifying words that are sort of greater or lesser than it, and compare them. So, I might say, a lot of people believe this or do this thing. I might then say, well, a few people, and then I might say, a whole bunch of people. So there I have three contrasting things. And then I would ask myself, which one of them is more truthful? And in some cases, I might say, oh, I think I was exaggerating. It's really only a few people. And so then I sort of caught my error of reasoning. And I think that just by the act of doing this once or twice, it changes your state of mind. And I notice that when I get into a state of mind where I'm focused first and foremost on being as accurate and truthful as possible, it sort of loosens the grip of those, like, denial mechanisms in my brain or whatever. I get into a state of mind where I'm really, like, more open to the truth, and I think that's a really good thing. Another example of this that happens really frequently is when I'm talking about things that I've heard from other people. I've noticed that sometimes I'm like, oh, people have told me this! And I hear people say that a lot. Oh yeah, people told me that such and such is true. One thing I've noticed is that if you ask them, how many people told you that, and the person thinks, and like people have asked this to me too, and then I start thinking, a lot of the times I or the other person will say, actually only one person told me that. So in that case I was grossly exaggerating, or the other person was grossly exaggerating by saying people, when really it was just one person. And that's important, because if you're evaluating the truthfulness of a certain statement, I think it's much more likely to be true if multiple people have told you that it's true, than if just one person. It doesn't guarantee that it's true, but it makes it more likely. And so it's a way that truth can get somewhat distorted by, like, exaggerating the amount of evidence supporting it. So, I hope you've gained some insight. I hope that you can use this technique to catch exaggeration in your own speech, and in the speech of others, and also in writing, when you read something that someone else has written, and also when you're writing something yourself. And when you're catching these things in your own thoughts, or in your own communications, I hope that you can use this technique to get into a healthier state of mind, where you're really searching for the truth, and working on embracing it as fully and closely as possible, rather than just sort of supporting and backing up things that you already believe, or that you want to believe, or have some sort of pressure or reason to believe. So I hope you gained some deep insight from this. Thank you!